Namaste and greetings to you all from India. I'm Dr. Radhika Sahani, a prosthodontist and an implantologist practicing in New Delhi, India since the past 25 years. I have always been very passionate towards implantology. So much so that I even went and certified myself in microsurgical, resurrective and restorative periodontal surgery under Professor Mark Hurzeller and Dr. Otto Zur in Germany. This is a little glimpse of my beautiful office located in the lap of nature in the midst of a beautiful city. Our office follows all international standards and norms and has two working operatories. Our clinic was awarded with the Clinic of the Year 2017 by the Fandent Dentistry Awards. During COVID, we've been functioning all throughout, barring three months of strict lockdown, and we follow very strict COVID-related protocols. In my long career in dentistry, my profession has been very satisfying and I have placed innumerable implants. But placing implants with the conventional method can sometimes put you at a disadvantage and we can all come across surgical and prosthetic surprises more frequently than desired. Earlier, an implant surgeon would place an implant wherever he would find greater amount of bone present. This would often result in a frustrated prosthodontist and an unsatisfactory final prosthetic result. Failures would usually arise as a result of lack of consideration of the superstructure during the pre-surgical planning. Challenges would arise surgically, either in the form of poor bone quality, inadequately calculated biomechanical forces, or unforeseen anatomical variations. In the prosthetic phase, a miscalculated implant placement can lead to inability to immediately temporize the patient, or we can end up with an unesthetic suprastructure leading to an angry, dissatisfied patient and in turn a bad propaganda for our office. In order to deliver and achieve consistent predictable results, I chose to switch to digital implantology. Digital implantology provided me with various advantages, some of them being prosthetic, prosthetic braced implant planning, precise implant placement, graftless solution, atraumatic surgery, immediate temporization, repetitive, predictable results, all of this leading to a much happier patient. Now, since the oral cavity is a relatively restricted space, a high degree of accuracy in placement of implant is very important for the success of the prosthesis. This can be achieved by means of a surgical guide, which provides adequate information regarding implant placement at the time of the surgery. Thus, eliminating those unforeseen surprises during the course of the treatment. Now let's consider the advantages of digital dentistry from the patient's perspective. The surgery is faster, painless, bloodless and resulted with minimal post-operative complications or swelling. Because of the nature of the surgery, it is the least invasive and atraumatic form of implantology. This hence becomes the choice of surgery for treating medically compromised patients like cancer survivors, nephrologically compromised patients, patients with heart ailments, diabetics and other serious ailments. So we can now finally start seeing happier, smiling and functionally satisfied patients at our practices. 
to sum it all digital implantology has given us a powerful platform to plan to design execute and deliver our surgical and prosthetic phase of the treatment effectively whether you are planning a single tooth replacement or a complex full mouth rehabilitation you can foresee the end result even before you begin so today i would like to take you all on a journey of a full mouth rehabilitation case which we successfully completed in just a single day we used the dio navi full art solution for both the surgical and prosthetic procedures the procedure went on seamlessly and we could complete the rehabilitation of each arch in just 2 hours each so let's start with why dio navi with so many surgically guided systems available in the market why did i finally choose dio navi to begin with it's the only completely digitalized solution in the market from pre planning to delivery of the final prosthesis using minimal steps and very high efficiency as a prosthodontist or an implant restorative dentist we all know that the restorative phase is more of a challenge as compared to the surgical phase a patient needs to be called back several times and the temporary prosthesis needs to be removed and rescrewed various times for impression taking and measurement recording which can be frustrating and a very painful experience for the patient dio navi has come out with simpler scanning and final prosthesis material which eliminate most of these steps also they have introduced the newer uv implants which claim to make the implant surface more hydrophilic and more resistant to biofilm formation this in turn makes the implant surgery more predictable and is known to reduce the time period of osseo integration to top it all their services to a dental practitioner are unparalleled there are many more advantages to boast of that we shall highlight during the course of our presentation now before we start our case study today a little understanding of a few terms which are very important in digital dentistry one of them is offset Offset is the vertical distance between the bone and top of the surgical sleeve guide. So Dio Navi is one guided system that gives us the choice of varying offsets ranging from 8 mm to 12 mm. Now how does this help us? Due to the choice of varying offsets available, it gives us the advantage of successfully using this system even in patients with limited mouth opening where in a surgical guided system can otherwise become a major challenge so we can use an offset of 8 mm in the posterior or 12 in the anteriors where the space is much more comparing dio navi to other systems This comes out as a major advantage which is more appreciated by an implant surgeon while carrying out the osteotomy during the surgical phase. So today I would finally like to introduce my patient Mr Pandey to you all. Mr Pandey is a 55 year old male with a terminal dentition. He has a medical history of long-term controlled diabetes and is mildly hypertensive. He is a chain smoker. His chief complaint when he came to see us was loose teeth, inability to chew, to chew anything, and embarrassment in public due to his missing front teeth. He was shy and had become a recluse. The smile had to be literally forced onto him. 
There are a few important criteria we need to keep in mind before we start any case. The preoperative analysis are undebatable. We spend an entire appointment taking detailed intraoral and facial photographs, each having its own importance. Preoperative photographs speak a lot about the facial structure and the support or missing soft and hard tissues which should not be underestimated. They are important to analyze the patient's lip support, the smile line, the midline, etc. These pictures show the patient smiling and in maximum intercuspation. The smiling view in the photograph is important to analyze whether the transition line of the soft tissue would be visible in the prosthesis. Also, it gives us a clue on the restorative space and whether there is a need for alveololectomy to hide the transition zone. This photograph also gives us the information about the occlusion scheme and whether any modification is required. In this particular case, they depict a class 1 occlusion scheme, adequate vertical dimension and a low lip line. There would hence be no need for any intervention for alveolectomy or either increase the restorative space or for aesthetics. Some more photographs were taken to analyze the patient in his side profile. These pictures inform us about adequate lip support. Hence, the need of replacement of only the missing teeth. Now in this case, if the philtrum was not supported or the nasolabial folds were much more sunken, we would have had to consider prosthesis with a flange to replace the resorbed hard and soft tissue. Another prerequisite for any full mouth rehabilitation is the recording of the patient's vertical dimension. In this case, it was easier as his vertical dimension was stable due to his retained dentition. But in cases where the vertical dimensions are unstable, we first need to record a stable vertical dimension using either removable prosthesis or wax dentures. After the photographs, we take the 3D intraoral scans of the patient. Scans of the upper and lower arch were taken along with the bite registration. Data of the patient's residual bone was recorded with the help of the CBCT. Then the CT data along with the intraoral scans were sent to the DO Navy Center for Digital Implant Planning. Using the implant planning software, the intraoral scans are superimposed onto the CT scans to get a complete vision of the bone, the soft tissue and the teeth. After assessing all the data sent, first the final prosthesis is designed, keeping in mind his available intraoral restorative space his lip support, smile line and the occlusal forces. If this particular case were to be handled in the conventional manner, it would take several appointments to prepare the models, take the bite registration, carry out the teeth setup trial and we could still end up creating an inaccurate provisional. Using the digital technology, we have saved not only time for ourselves and the patient, but also earned the flexibility to choose the most aesthetic and stable teeth structure for our patients. Like we say, always begin with the end in mind. After the prosthetic planning, the implant positions were analyzed depending on the biomechanics and most optimal bone quality. Adequate inter space, adequate AB, AP spread, 
and high primary stability of the plant implants was assessed for a long term success. The number and position of the implants in this case was planned depending on the amount of bone quality and quantity available. According to the zones of Bedrosian classification, zone 1 is the maxillary anterior teeth, zone 2 the premolar region and zone 3 the molar region. If adequate bone is present in all the three zones, the treatment of choice is usually six to eight parallelly placed implants in the maxilla. If the bone is deficient in zone 3, there could be two treatment choices. Choice 1. Sinus lift and grafting with delayed loading. Choice 2. All on 4 with immediate loading. In this protocol treatment, time, and expense of the patient are reduced. Now, if the bone is deficient in both zone 2 and zone 3, the treatment could also be executed using zygomatic implants to rehabilitate the patient other than sinus lift and bone crafting. Now, let's look at our planning in totality for this particular case. In the maxilla, we have adequate bone only in zone 1 and 2. Hence, tilting the distal implants gave us the luxury of a graftless solution. We could also place longer implants to get better initial stability and more blow bone implant contact in good bone quality parent bone. This could also help us in achieving bicortical anchorage by engaging the nasal floor. Don't forget, this is an immediate loading case. Hence, achieving an initial torque value of 35 Newton centimeter or more is an absolute essential. In the mandible, the bone resorption in the posterior mandible did not allow us to place any implants without complex grafting procedures. Adequate bone was only found in the intermental foramina region. Therefore, it was decided to go ahead with all of four protocol for both upper and lower arch as this was the most time efficient and economical option. The emergence of the distal implant was at the position of the second premolars, giving us the advantage of rehabilitating him with 12 teeth in the final prosthetic phase. During temporization, we limited them to 10 as we did not want any untoward cantilever forces during the healing phase. After an approval from the clinician and necessary changes incorporated, a detailed implant placement report is generated and sent to the dentist for a final review. Each implant site is clearly mentioned along with the length and diameter of the implant to be used. This sheet depicts the site where the implant needs to be placed, the type of implant, the dimensions of the implant to be used in that particular site. It also gives us the placement view of the implant in 3D dimensions and the quality of bone in contact with the implant. A similar sheet is produced for each implant individually to analyze if any final changes would be required. After this detailed planning stage, a surgeon can confidently go ahead with the surgical procedure knowing that he has eliminated all the surgical surprises that could be waiting for him during the implant placement. From the point of view of a restorative dentist, they know that the implants will be placed in optimal position and bone and now the preformed provisionals can be delivered immediately after the surgical phase with minimal frustrations 
an effort on their part. After the surgeon approves the planning report, a detailed sheet of surgical protocol is delivered to the dentist. The report clearly mentions the implant site, the implant type, the implant dimensions and the offset to be used along with the drilling sequence. The speed and torque of each drill to be used during the procedure are also mentioned in detail. In our clinic, before starting an implant surgery, we always have a checklist of our armamentarium, material, procedures and machines. We want our procedures to be carried out as seamlessly as possible. The implants and the prosthetic components are counted, checked and visually displayed to avoid any confusion during the procedures. All the drills and the anchor kit are rechecked to make sure that they are not missing or blunt. Recleaned a day prior to the surgery and autoclaved on the same day just before the surgery. There can be no compromise on the surgical protocols. The surgical stents are the most important part of the surgery. A surgical stent can be tooth supported mucosa supported or bone supported. Before the surgery, all the stents are checked, counted, as there could actually be more than one for the same arch, then dipped in chlorhexidine prior to surgery for cold disinfection. These stents cannot be autoclaved. In this particular case too, there were two stents in each surgical arch. The first stent was primarily tooth supported while the second was supported by the anterior implants using guide fixes. Also each implant position could have different offsets that need to be kept in mind during the surgery. Different offset gives me the luxury of more vertical space while drilling for the tilted implants in the posterior region. Now, as the patient presented with a terminal dentition, a few of his teeth could not be used to support the guide. With mobility of gate grade 3, those teeth were spotted and extracted prior to checking the fit of a surgical guide. As these teeth were periodontally compromised, after extraction, the socket was curated to remove all the infected tissue and debrided with soft tissue laser. Here I would like to emphasize that it is imperative to check the fit of the surgical guide before beginning the surgical procedure and be doubly sure that the supporting teeth are sitting well in their housings. Otherwise, the position of the osteotomy and hence the implant could be compromised and this in turn could compromise the final prosthesis. Another important aspect is choosing the right drill tube for the initial osteotomy. Sites where immediate implants are placed will need a longer drill tube to prevent the pilot drill from slipping. The pilot drill is the most important drill as it marks the initial path for the osteotomy. Make sure that the tube is completely seated in the sleeve and does not get lifted during the procedure. Or this could affect the final length of the osteotomy. The pilot drill is used at a faster speed of 800 rpm with saline for effective drilling. The beauty of this guided system is that it uses its subsequent drills at a speed of 100 rpm 
without water. I like to irrigate the osteotomy with cold saline after every drill, making sure that the tip of the syringe touches the end of the osteotomy. This is the best way to ensure that there is no bone burning or any bone chip residue left behind. Each subsequent drill used now enlarges the osteotomy in length and diameter. The drills must be used in a pumping action, making sure that you take it down till the end of the stopper that has been incorporated in the drill. The profile drill is one of my favorites in the kit. It not only shapes and profiles the osteotomy, but also helps as a bone trap to collect the autogenous bone that can be used further if needed. This is at times the first drill used in osteotomy when you are preparing a socket in which immediate extraction has been carried out or it's the last drill for every single osteotomy, especially in D1 and D2 bones. With the final osteotomy preparation, now the UV implant along with this housing is placed into the UV chamber and activated for 20 seconds. The button is placed to open the trap door. The UV implant, along with its housing, is placed inside. The trap door is shut and the implant activated for 20 seconds. The UV activated implant is taken out of its housing and is now ready to be driven into the osteotomy site at a torque of 30 Newton centimeter or more. Towards the end of the implant placement, I would personally recommend you to switch to hand torquing the implant in. This is so that you can better control and align the flat silver surface marking over the implant driver to the extension wings on the guide sleeve. This is a very important step to make sure that the prosthesis fits as pre-designed. If not taken care of, this step can set you back hours together, making the procedure cumbersome and strenuous for you as well as the patient. After the placement of the two front straight implants, the previous surgical guide is discarded. Other teeth in the way of the posterior osteotomy are extracted and guide number two is used to complete the placement of the posterior tilted implants. The guide is further stabilized by using the guide fix in the anterior implants. The guide fix is color coded depending on different offset lengths. The blue denotifies a 9 mm offset. Gold or yellow is for 10.5 mm offset and the purple for a 12 mm offset. Now our guide was stable enough to receive the drills for the posterior osteotomies. After placing the anterior and the tilted posterior implants, the bone profile drill or the bone mill is used judiciously to remove the lip of bone around the implants and to ready the area 
to receive the multi unit abutments any kind of bone that is left around the implants can hinder the placement or seating of the multi unit abutments all on four is a very demanding and a stressful surgery towards the end the assessment of parallelism while placing the multi unit abutment can get very difficult and on a bad day it can take you a long time to select and achieve proper angulation hence also forcing us to increase our inventory dio navy has made this step much simpler by introducing a multi unit abutment transfer jig that carries the pre decided in angulation and height multi unit abutment to their respective implant and correct the angulation to achieve parallel path of insertion can you fathom how much time and energy it saves another unique design feature that dio navy has incorporated in their multi unit abutment is the ability to torque the screwing securing screw at 25 to 30 newton cm as compared to the other system wherein the securing screw is torqued at 19 newton cm this prevents long term chances of screw loosening The temporary cylinders were then screwed onto the multi-unit abutments. The parallelism achieved can be well appreciated in this slide. A feather on the company's cap is also their pre-formed, highly aesthetic provisionals with precisely cut temporary cylinder pickup holes. that reduces the clinical timing and effort tremendously the fit of the provisionals was checked in the mouth for proper seating and adequate space for flowable composite we should also make sure that the height of the temporary cylinders is not more than the occlusal surface or it could interfere with the bite jig leading to improper seating of the prosthesis and undesired occlusion this could further result in long chair side time wasted on occlusal adjustments and space between the tissue surface of the prosthesis and the residual ridge i'm now playing a short video for you to visualize the simplicity by which we could seat the provisionals pick up the temporary cylinders and maintain a proper occlusion by using the bite jig this jig eliminates the strenuous occlusal balancing at the end of an already stressful surgery the jig is placed over the upper arch There are guide pins available and the proper length should be chosen to make sure that do not exceed the occlusal surface. Slivers of rubber dam are placed around the multi-unit abutments and the temporary cylinders. The provisional is placed in the mouth along with the bite jig and patient asked to bite. light curing resin is filled into these through the resin access holes that are present on the buckle and easy to access
the bite jig is now removed. That looks and is actually very simple to handle. Now the addition, empty spaces and rest of the cylinder area are picked up directly in the mouth using flowable composite. Once the temporary cylinders are all picked in the prosthesis, I always prefer to reline the tissue surface with a wash impression for greater accuracy and better tissue contact. The tissue surface is then relined and a convex surface achieved which is highly polished to establish easily cleansing areas. Fit of the provisionals is checked in the mouth before the final talking of the screw and sutures placed at this stage if required. In this particular case, we needed to place sutures in the upper arch as we extracted eight teeth from either side and the soft tissue due to periodontitis had large pocket and was loose and open. So we tried to get an enlarged picture to, for you to appreciate the fit of the temporary prosthesis with the soft tissue. This was taken post final talking. After completing the upper all-on-four implant placement, a similar protocol was carried out to rehabilitate the lower arch. Once the upper provisionals were talked onto the implants, we used the bite jig to correctly align the lower provisional onto the temporary cylinders. Temporary cylinders were again picked up using the flowable composite and after a wash impression, again, the tissue surface was contoured and polished. The use of the bite jig as mentioned helped us achieve a desirable occlusion with minimal adjustments. Now taking these photographs was a moment of pride and triumph for my team as having completed a full mouth rehabilitation in just a single day was an um, immense achievement. While establishing the occlusion at this stage, we made it a point to concentrate maximum forces in the anterior region and made sure that the shim stock dragged easily through the premolars. The cantilever was completely eliminated. The patient was given a night guard to wear at night to eliminate any other undue forces. He was also instructed to be on a soft diet, eliminating any nuts and seeds for the next three months. Strict oral hygiene instructions were pressed upon. The satisfaction I felt by restoring the smile and function was unparalleled. Truly meaning, restore a smile, restore a life. This was an OPG taken immediately on the same day after the surgery. You can change the life of a patient in just a day to day, thanks to the DO Navy Full Art Surgical Guided Protocol System. I put in this photograph because I would like you all to appreciate how the patient arrived on day two. After having gone through 12 extraction, two all on four arches, the patient was very excited to see us again the next day with minimal pain and almost no swelling. This is how we changed our patient's life in a day. The final prosthesis would be delivered to the patient after three months. Optimal osseointegration of the patient will be confirmed by the AQI reading. The company has devised a unique method of digital impression using the temporary prosthesis rather than the abutments in the oral cavity. Special scan bodies are attached to the fitting surface of the temporary abutment of the provisionals and then the scan taken. 
The final prosthesis is 3D printed. We will come back to you with a few more pictures and data on the same. His heartfelt smile and gratitude spoke a million words. It took me a few years to travel through a digitally paced single tooth implant to a complex full mouth rehabilitation. This has been the most humbling, satisfying and an enriching experience. I thank you all for being, a, being patient and being a part of my beautiful journey today. A special thank you to the Dio Navy team. Thank you and Namaste. Thank you.